Oh, hi, Patrick. How are you? Good. How are you, Stefan? Yeah, really good. Thanks. I really enjoyed the. I've only seen two episodes so far, but really enjoyed what I've seen so far of the right stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm going to begin just by asking what it was that initially attracted you to this to this project and to this character. Uh, it was just the source material, honestly. I, the book it was so uh, powerful to me as a young man. My father gave it to me, I think, when I was like 14 years old um, and said, you, you got to read this book. And uh, I, I just fell in love with it. I fell in love with the story. I fell in love with Tom Wolfe's sense of humor and his insight. And I just uh, it, that really was sort of the birthplace of my fascination with space and the space program. And um, yeah, so when I found out they were making a show, um, I'd always felt that the movie, while wonderful, had not been able to cover all of the, you know, insane amount of detail and, and, and fascinating interactions between all these guys and, and that sort of reality show aspect of it all. There was so much in the book and, and, and in the story that the film couldn't cover. So the idea that we could do this in a television program was very exciting. It felt like a more appropriate way to get into the details and the meat of the story. Yeah, because from, from an audience point of view, I love sort of um, watching a TV series because you do get that kind of more slow burning character development. Is that the same then for an actor? Do you feel like when you're working on a on a character, on a series, that you do have that kind of the benefit of time and more freedom to access the, the role at hand? Yeah, I mean, I've made a couple of films in my life, but honestly, most of my career has been in the, the television format. So it's what I know best. So, I mean, I think it's films are... I mean, I love film. It's a distillation, but you have to distill. You have to get down to sort of the the the, the sort of basic idea of what not basic, sometimes very complicated, but you have to distill it down to just a few things because you only have so much time. Um, and with a story like this, it's fun. TV is built for you to just like explore a world. Really, you can build a whole world, and and there's no end to the amount of source material for us to draw from. Each of us, um, as care as actors on the show you know, have this whole in rich lifetime of experience of each of these people um, and, and, and the interactions and the maneuvering and the manipulating and the insecurities and the fears and the triumphs. I mean, that's just something that you can't fit into three hours. So yeah, it's absolutely a joy to be able to show up to set, you know, for eight months of the year and just explore different things, depending on what the episode is really about. And did you feel a kind of pressure playing a, a historical figure? Because you've not done that too often in your career. And I just wondered, I mean, obviously Never. it must be so helpful to have those kind of reference points. Um, but at the same time, there must be nerves knowing that people that, that knew him are going to watch your portrayal of him. Terrifying. I'm still yeah. terrified. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the only way I could overcome the terror was just to equip myself with as much insight and information as possible, honestly. There's no hope that you're ever going to like you know, the, the the idea that I have to like be John Glenn or be the perfect version of John Glenn or mimic John Glenn, like that was what was terrifying me right from the beginning. But the more I learned about him and not just the him that the world knows about via his, you know, the book about him or, you know, YouTube videos or the, the part of John Glenn that was outward facing that he wanted people to know about, but getting to know who he was through access to an incredible amount of material private material, letters between him and his wife, um, letters between him and the Kennedys, uh, journal entries, all that stuff helped me to see that there was this other part of him. And it helped me dial down my anxiety because I thought, you know, I'm just telling my version. I'm, I'm going, I, I, I took as much as I could from all the resources available to me and had the opportunity to just sort of explore what seemed to me a part of John Glenn that maybe hasn't been communicated before. So, you know, there's no doubt you fall short, you don't get it right. And that people who are like hardcore John Glenn um, people who have spent their lifetime studying him or know him will be able to find no end of inconsistencies or things that we got wrong. But my hope is that they would see that the the through line, the heartbeat of of the guy and what his struggles may have been and, and where he may be misstepped. And then when he overcame that, um, to do something even greater that if, if, if we can follow that line and keep those people on board, then I'll be happy. And so how in awe are you of what these these men did? I mean, when you just takes watching a couple of episodes of the right stuff, just to remind ourselves of the courage of <laughs> of what they did. I mean, it's, it's incredible. So I'm just I'm just I'm not obviously when I say would you do it? I don't mean would you do it? It's exactly the same. But you get like Richard Branson wants to send people up to space just as a kind of on a day trip. Are you someone that has that kind of that um, that courage or, or that, that inclination? <laughs> I would do it now in a heartbeat, but me saying that I would do it now is a completely different thing than yeah. people in the 1950s saying, 
all right, we're just going to build this thing from scratch. We're going to stick a couple of monkeys in it once and see how it works. And then we're going to go like, to me, that is insane, but it's also a testament to who these guys were before the space program. They were test pilots. Um, and that means their job was literally to get in planes and fly them faster than they were supposed to fly and push them to the point where they break in order to understand, you know, what that point is and how far and how fast you can push these, 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 these insane instruments of, of war. I mean, it's such a crazy job that of course it was these guys who were the ones who were willing to do it. And I don't think they had a lot of fear. They had adrenaline, but like, this is what they did every day. Um, so doing it now is a completely different thing. It'd still be scary. It still involves <laughs> overcoming a lot of anxiety. Um, but you know, these people were building the program every step of the way they were in the capsule. They were deciding where each of these buttons was going to go. Um, if there should be a window where the window should be and hoping to God that when they get up, you know, for John Glenn, when he got on that bigger rocket, the Atlas rocket which consistently blew up every time they tested it, that this time was going to be the time it didn't. So that kind of courage, I have a hard time understanding, but I'm certainly in awe of it. And I was just wondering if you could tell me a little bit about working with Jake on this project, because I like as I've only seen, as I've said, a couple of episodes, but you can tell that there's a there's a dynamic there and a, and a kind of relationship that's going to be quite an interesting one that unfolds across the course of the series. Yeah, it's really fun. I mean, you know, there's obviously a, a lot of uh, competition and uh, resentment between these two characters, uh, but that couldn't be less the case between us. Jake and I got together very early in the process. Um, I think I was the first to be cast. And I think Jake may have been one of the last. And as soon as I found out that he was cast, we got together and had lunch and we started talking through the, and started comparing notes and sharing research with each other. And he's such a, he's such a fun, uh, hardworking, deeply passionate actor. Um, and so we had, we had a ball just like, you know, feeling very safe with each other, figuring out what the scene was about, what direction we could push it in. If he needed something from me, I could give it a, give it a shot. And if I need something from him, I had no problem asking. So it was really like that with the whole cast, to be honest, it was an incredibly, um, giving, dedicated, exciting group of people. I feel very grateful to be a part of it. Yeah, so, yeah, from what I've gathered from people that make kind of these sort of TV series, is that there's a real kind of family setup on there. Because obviously, I mean, you've been in some TV series that have gone over across years. I mean, how has mm -hmm. that? I mean, you must get so used to working with people day in, day out. Not just not just cast members, but we're talking, you know, like sort of makeup yeah. artists. You know? I mean, yeah. it must it must be quite hard when that when a series ends, not just because you're going to say goodbye to the character, but to the to the lifestyle, I guess. Yeah, it's a great point. Um, and especially when it's the first season of a show, you know, when we were doing suits, uh, you know, it came a point where we kind of knew we were all going to see each other again. Maybe some crew members would come and go in between or, but you always sort of like, most of us are going to be back together and I'll see you next year. Um, with a first season show like this, we got incredibly close, uh, like you said, not just the cast, but the crew. Um, and you, when the season's over, you go, I don't know. I don't know if we'll see each other again. I don't like who knows this, this might be it. Um, so that's, it's sad. Ultimately, like, you know, you're tired at the end of a season. So you're also ready to kind of give it a rest and you feel accomplished and uh, hope that you, you did your job to the best of your ability. Um, but it certainly is difficult to say goodbye to everybody because you work such close at long hours and such close quarters. Uh, you have to overcome adversity and come up solid solutions to problems every step of the way uh and in doing so you really you 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 make a significant bond with each other it's hard to say goodbye for sure so my final question was was sort of built on that it was obviously because when suits sort of came to an end I'm just wondering if um as much as you might love the experiences and like and miss all the people that you work with is there a slight freedom of when you've been attached to a kind of tv series for the best part of a decade that now yeah. you haven't got that kind of annual commitment and you know I, I interviewed Maisie Williams from Game of Thrones once and I think she said mm -hmm. the first thing she was going to do when it was over was just dye her hair green because she wasn't allowed to do that for years because yeah. she always yeah. had to look the same every year so I just wondered if, absolutely. if there was a, something quite freeing in some ways about finishing a series. There's absolutely something freeing. Um, you know, it's sad. You say your goodbyes and then you move, you get home and you go on free and you have a few weeks of feeling free and excited. And then if you don't have a job set up for yourself or know where you're going, then then the fear rushes in. At least that was my experience. It's like, oh, am I ever going to work again? What am I going to do? Um, it's everything, you know, you love having the freedom, but also when you pull something that was such a huge part of your life out and you have suddenly no end of space 
and nothing is rushing in to take it, you have to sort of change your whole way of living. You have to create for yourself, you know, the new routine and the new pattern. So for me, that was the gift of stopping suits. I know I needed to do that. I'd been away from my home. I'd been away from my wife. Uh, I just needed time to sort of like decompress from the whole experience and figure out what it was that I wanted to do next. And uh, a few projects came along the way and, and none of them felt quite right. I didn't, I felt like I was just going to take them to take a job. Um, and I luckily, I felt very fortunate. I was in a situation because of the success of suits that I didn't have to do that. And then when this script came through, I knew immediately I, I, before I even read the script, honestly, I saw right stuff in my inbox and something went like, this is, this has got to be the next thing. And then I read the script and it was sold. It was, you know, Mark Lafferty had written a beautiful, beautiful script. So yeah, it was, uh, it's a strange time, but I feel very grateful that I got to take a moment, sort of gather myself before getting back to work. Brilliant. Well, thanks so much for your time, Sir Patrick. It's been a real pleasure. And best of luck with uh, the series. And maybe we'll speak again after like series four or something. <laughs> I hope so. All right. That's good. Have a well, good take one. Care. Bye bye. Bye bye. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey, you guys. Is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey You Guys.